So in this lecture, we are going to start the meshing and we are going to know about auto mesh tool. So auto mesh is one of the most important and most powerful meshing command in hypermesh and we are going to use it frequently. So it is very important to understand some basic features of auto mesh command. So to do the meshing, first of all, let me open up a file. In your project file, go to the 2D folder and go to clip. Here, open up the file clip mid surface. Now in this file, you can see this is a sheet metal part. So first of all, we are going to extract the mid surface. To extract the mid surface, we know that we need to go to geometry and go to mid surface. From here, we are going to use the auto mid surface. So click on the surface and click on displayed and click on extract. So the mid surface has been extracted. So here a material is showing into this model tree. We don't need it. So I can click. So I can go to this material, right click and go to delete. Now press escape once again. Here go to the component. You can see in this component, the first component contains the sheet metal part and the second one contains the mid surface. So we are going to hide this sheet metal and only the mid surface is on. Or what I can do is I can go to middle surface, right click, isolate only. So when you select this isolate only, it is going to only isolate the middle surface. Or sometimes we have some more feature like we have contact, we have loads. Then if we use this isolate option only, then it will only isolate the component, not other parts. So this isolate only, only isolate the component here. Now let me change the color for this. I will go to this part. I'm going to make some better color. Let's say this is color. Okay. Now this is much brighter color. After that, we are going to use the auto mesh. So we can find this auto mesh command in this 2D and you will see auto mesh. Click on this auto mesh. Also, we have a keyboard shortcut. So I press escape or click return from here, press F12 from the keyboard, press F12 and you will find the auto mesh command. So in this auto mesh, you will see multiple options. First of all, you will see surface or element. I click on this arrow, you will see surface or element. So whenever we have any initial surface like here, we only have surface. Then we are going to first mesh with surface. And we use this element for the remeshing. Here we have some option like size and bias. And then we have batch mesh, edge deviation, surface deviation, rigid mesh. So initially we are going to use the size and mesh. Batch mesh is a very powerful command whenever we have a multiple files. For example, in a car system, we have hundreds of components. So it is not possible to mesh them manually one by one. So in that case, we are going to use the batch mesh. It is a type of automatic meshing. So we have edge deviation and surface deviation that are used in mostly in tetra meshing, but we can also use in shell meshing. So we are going to cover them later. Okay. So initially we are going to take size and bias. So below this, you will see one more arrow interactive and there's one more option automatic. So this interactive and automatic option basically helpful when we want to create the mesh for a complete part. So by default, let it take it as interactive. And whenever we have a complex part, we are going to, we are also going to use the automatic option. But however, more than 90% of the time, we are going to use this interactive. After that, we see option of element size. So in meshing, we have a default element size. For example, let's say by default, it is showing here the element size is 10. So what does it mean? Let's say I will go to the surface. So whenever we have a part like this, first of all, we need to check its dimension. To check the dimensions, what I do, I will press F4 from the keyboard. Or you can also go to this option geometry and distance. So here we don't have any nodes right now. So I'm going to select two point. Select the two extreme point. So for this, I'm going to rotate it. Okay, rotate it to the XZ view. Here you can see XZ. So click on this point icon. Here 
I will zoom in here this first point and the second point this last point so you can see this distance is somewhere close to 94 so it means this length of the part is somewhere close to 94 and let's let's find the width so select this node and select this point this point here you can see this horizontal dimension is going to represent its width so it will be x so the x will be okay it is not showing the dimension once again let me pick up this and this okay so in axis so in x you can see it is 82 so dimensions are somewhere close to 180 okay so now uh, when I take the element size let's say once again go to f12 if I take the element size 10 here you will see so I will select the surface click on mesh you can see how big is the mesh size so these are very big elements press escape once again press f4 here we have nodes right now so click on two nodes select the first node and second node you can see the distance between them is somewhere close to 8 so it we can see it is a very big element size so here i'm going to okay in the type of display i'm going to use the mixed so with this mixed it is going to show the edges with this green color which is much more better okay so if we want to delete this mesh what we can do is i will go to delete in the type select element click on display delete return once again go to f12 okay here let's say i will reduce the element size let's say this is one and then i will select the surface click mesh now you can see how small the elements are so this is the meaning of this element size so this element size basically represent the distance between the nodes so from this node to this node this is the element size okay so now click reject i don't want the mesh here and click on return now you can see the surface is selected so if you don't want to select or reset it click on this arrow highlighting okay now we have mesh type so in meshing we have multiple type of element click on this arrow you will see quad quad means quadrilateral shape tria means triangular shape mixed mixed means it is a combination of quad and tria then we have R tria, R tria means right angle triangle, then quad only. So quad only means it will only contain the quad element. Okay, so whenever we are going to use the 2D mesh or shell mesh, we are going to use the mixed, that is the industry standard. Then when we going to use the 3D mesh, we are also going to use the R tria and quad only. Okay. So why we select that? We will cover it later when we do those types of meshing. So here I'm going to select mixed. Okay, let's say what, what will happen when I select another type. I will say quad. Okay, so let's say I pick up this surface. Okay, pick up this, pick up the surface and mesh. You can see all the elements are quadrilateral element. Okay, now click on reject, return. Then here I will select trier, mesh. Now you can see if I zoom in here, these are all triangular element. So triangular elements are useful when we do the tetra mesh for the 3D meshing. Click on the reject, return. Okay, so for the shell meshing, we are going to use the mixed element. It means it contains both quad and tria so after that we have some more option like element to surface component in it means in which component this mesh will go for example if i click on this mesh and click on the turn you can see the color of mesh is going to match the color with this middle surface too if i turn it off and on, on again the mesh is going into this collector the reason the mesh is going into this collector is because here we have selected element to surface component. It means element will go into that component which has the surface. Now there is one more option. Click on this arrow you will see element to current component. So current means whenever we have multiple component in any assembly or any part 
we can select one of the component as our current component. To identify the current component, you can see the name of the component will be highlighted here. So right now you can see our current component is this one, IV I10. So this is our current component. If you want to change the comp current component, for example, I want to change it. So go to this component, right click, go to make current. Okay. So what will happen when I select this element to current component? Let's say I will pick up some another surface, pick up the surface, click on mesh, click return. Now you can see the mesh is showing with blue color. It means the mesh has gone to into this collector, the first one. Pick up this mesh, you can see. So this is the advantage of selecting this option. So by default, we are going to use element to surface component. Okay. So I don't want all this mesh. So click on this delete element displayed delete. So click on return. Once again, I will go to auto mesh F12. Here we have some more option like first order, second order element. So in finite element or FEA, we have two types of order, first order and second order. Okay. So initially we are going to take first order. So for the second order element, they also have node at the midpoint. So by default here, we are going to use the first order. After that we have connectivity. So click on this arrow, you will see keep, redo, break, previous, etc. But most of the time we are going to use this keep connectivity because we want connected mesh. Okay. And then we have some more option like flow, map, etc. So let it by default as it is in hyper mesh. And we are going to change these settings later when we do some advanced meshing. So these are some of the options in auto mesh command.